Hi, I'm Steve. You can call me Steve. There's more to Snow Plus than just physics. We're a multidisciplinary team, which means there are scientists on it from many different fields of science. I myself am a chemist. Even though Snow Plus is a physics experiment, there is a lot of chemistry. The giant plastic bubble, also known as the acrylic vessel, is filled with this organic scintillator, which I call the flashy liquid. When a neutrino hits the scintillator in just the right way, it makes a flash and gives off photons of light. These photons get turned into electric signals by the photomultiplier tubes, which are then recorded as our data. In order for the photon to get from the spot where it's emitted to the photomultiplier tubes, it has to pass through the rest of the scintillator. If this liquid isn't perfectly clear and colorless, that photon could get absorbed or otherwise intercepted and not detected. Obviously, this is a bad thing. While we were filling the acrylic vessel, we took many, many samples for quality assurance. We inspected each and every sample to make sure it wasn't turning yellow or dusty or cloudy, any of which could impede the photon from reaching its destination. Now, this was all fairly ordinary chemistry. Everything we did had well-established written procedures. The really exciting part of chemistry is where you get to make up something new. One of the main goals of Snow Plus is to study a rare form of nuclear decay. So we load the detector with a particular element that undergoes this decay. This element is tellurium, which is found towards the bottom of the periodic table. Nuclear decay is where an atom falls apart and turns into a different atom. In beta decay, one of the neutrons in the core of the atom shoots off an electron and becomes a proton. The atom therefore becomes a different element. In double beta decay, this happens twice at once. In our case, tellurium ends up as xenon. However, we can't just dump a few tons of tellurium into the acrylic vessel and expect everything to work. It has to dissolve in the scintillator and keep everything nice and clear and colorless. Many compounds of tellurium are unbearably stinky, like unbearably stinky. If you're familiar with what they add to natural gas to make it smellable, that, that sulfury smell, tellurium is hundreds of times smellier than that. We cannot use this. Of the compounds that don't stink, none of them will dissolve. At least, none of the ones we can buy. An organic solvent is made mostly with carbon, and that carbon is decorated with hydrogen. These CH bonds are not polar. There is no polarity building up there. Oxygen and hydrogen, when you make a bond of those, they are very polar. Things that are polar do not play well with things that are not polar. They do not mix. It is literally oil and water. That is why oil and water don't mix, is because water is very polar, it has all of these OH bonds. Oil is not polar, it has all of these CH bonds, and they do not play nicely together. What we ended up doing was taking a tellurium compound called telluric acid, or TEA, and decorating it with 1,2-butane diol, which we call BD for simplicity. You can see that the TEA is surrounded by OH groups. These groups like to dissolve in water, and not in oily things like our flashy liquid scintillator. So we have to make it dissolve in oil. The BD also has these OH groups. When BD and TEA react together, those OH groups form a new bond that's happy to dissolve in the scintillator, and they spit out a water molecule that we can remove before we add the new compound to the acrylic sphere. I'm saying this only because somebody challenged me to say the name cis bis 1 2 butane dilato 2 minus kappa O1 kappa O2 dihydroxido tellurium. So, we have a compound that will dissolve in the scintillator. Good, right? Not quite. Remember that water molecule we made when we made the compound? It turns out it can break that bond we made and give us back what we started with, which will sink to the bottom of the acrylic sphere. Even though the scintillator won't mix with water, there can be a little bit of water present, just a little bit. And that little bit of water can cause us problems. But we have a solution. We can add another molecule that's a bit like soap, which can gather up any little bits of water and keep them away from our tellurium compound. It's called dimethyl dodecylamine, and it looks like this. 
I just like saying these words, dimethyl dodecylamine. It's got one end that likes water and a long tail that isn't fond of water. And it gathers together in clumps and it holds any stray water in the middle of the clump where it can't cause trouble. So problem solved. And that's just a glimpse of my job as a chemist on Snow Plus. Thanks for watching. I've been Steve. Of the compounds of tellurium that don't stink, none of the ones we can buy will dissolve. I'm going to try that again and be confident about what I'm saying. In beta decay, one of the neutrons in the core of the atom shoots off an electron and becomes a proton. When that happened? I went the wrong way. <laughs> it's not tin. It's... Really? Radon? No. Xenon? This new compound is called cis bis 12 butane dilato 2 kappa o one kappa o 2 dihydroxy... Damn it! Hydroxido. This new compound is called cis bis 12 butane dilato 2 minus kappa o one kappa o 2 dihydroxido tellurium. Can you do that without reading it? Highly unlikely. But now that you've challenged me, 